I believe this is the era that the Lord has made. Yes. And we will rejoice and be glad. You think you got something in Lodi Ball? I've got news for you. He's extending an invitation. Get under the king's table. Mephibosheth got under the king's table. The table hid his handicap. They couldn't see his handicap because the table hid it. God is inviting you to the king's table. You don't have to settle for leftover stuff. God says, come on and let's go to the king's table. I've got meal for you. I've got lamb at the table. The lamb of God which taken away the sins of the world. I've got bread on the table. He said, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. I've got wine on the king's table. Ho, oh, everyone that thirsts, come to the water. He that have no money, buy wine, buy milk, buy money without price. I've got honey on the table. He's sweeter than honey from out of the cone. Shout glory. Shout glory. Shout glory. Come and dine. You've been in Lodi Bar long enough. Get on out of there. Leave that one horse town. Leave that spirit. It's vexed your righteousness. It's kept you all disturbed. It's kept you upset. But tell yourself. Tell that spirit. Tell that devil. I'm coming out of Lodi Bar. I don't belong in this low down state. I don't belong laying on the ground. I don't belong in this bottle of alcohol. I don't belong in this skid row. I don't belong on the bowery. I don't belong in what slum. Get on up in your spirit. Get on up in your frame of mind. Come on out of Lodi Bar where the sun is shining. Come on out in the newness of life. Step on out where the sun is shining, where the wind is blowing. He'll make you a new creature. He'll lift you and bless you. He'll take away your burden and leave you with a song. How many know he'll do it? There is a generation that curse their father. That is to say they dishonor their father and does not bless their mother. Ungrateful. Ungrateful for the mother. Children wouldn't even know curse words if they didn't hear them out your mouth or over the television. But they come out of grown folks' mouth. Hmm? There's a generation that's pure number 12 in their own eyes in other words you've got a self-righteous generation that feel they just right if i don't want to go to school that's my business if i want to get up that's my business and yet is not washed from their filthiness there is a generation oh how lofty are they eyes you'd be surprised of the spirit of pride that's in young folks like God, you were glad to get something to wear. You were glad for handing me downs. You were glad uh, handing me down wearing one another's shoes, putting cotton in the toe to keep the shoe from sliding off, putting cardboard at the bottom of the shoe to keep from glad from glass cutting your feet. You were glad. Like I say, I wore patent leather shoes many days. But let's set the record straight with patent leather. I'm not talking about them shiny shoes. 
patent leather when the sole was separated from the shoe. And when you walk down the street, the leather, the, the, the sole was patent on the sidewalk. And as you walk, it was saying, patent leather, patent leather, patent leather. That's what I'm talking about. I'm familiar <laughs> with patent leather. You've got youth today. If you don't spend seventy-five to hundred dollars to get them tennis and mama, that ain't the style now. Nah. And I keep telling folk, look like they're going, look like the youth is going through a raggedy contest to find out who could look the raggediest. More holes in the Levi's and everything, just looking raggedy and dyed clothes, spotted with bleach and everything. Oh, how lofty are their eyes. And their eyelids are lifted up. If you don't get them nothing that's in style now, nah, they ain't gonna wear it. And you think you smart cause you bought them something. I know he gonna like this, this gonna knock him dead. But youth is under peer pressure now. You say, where would it all end? I'ma tell you, it's gonna take, it's not gonna end at the White House. It's not gonna end at the White House. It's going to have to end with God's people praying, humbling themselves and seeking God's face and turning from the, their wicked ways that God will hear from heaven and forgive the sin and heal the land. When you're filled with the Holy Ghost, there's boldness that goes with it. These are the days we've got to have a God-given, spirit-filled, sanctified Holy Ghost boldness now. I mean, let the devil know whose side you're on and stop being diplomatic and, 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 and a statesman and, and between here and I'm on your side and on your side. Everybody's not going to like you when you take a stand for God. When you walk with God, everybody's not going to speak well of you. And then there is a drunkenness. Oh, y'all don't want to go with me. I can't get a bit of help around here. There's drunkenness. You say, well, Reverend, now you're getting beside yourself. But drunkenness goes with being filled. Because on the day of Pentecost, they thought they were drunk. Well, why would they think they were drunk if they were not staggering? It's all right to stagger as long as it's under the power of God. It's all right to stagger as long as it's under the Spirit. Now people feel when you go along this way, you're fanatical. And we're trying to make the Holy Ghost like we are. Cold, dead, twice dead, plucked up by the root. But I'm here to tell you there's a drunkenness. Peter said, we're not drunk as ye suppose. You know, I have a problem. I have a problem trying to understand some of these folks that say they feel. Now hinting you're judging, no, I'm not judging, I'm fruit inspecting. And by their fruits you will know them. <laughs> and a tree is known by the fruited bass. And you know, I can remember when folks would get filled years ago, it was such a power on them till they staggered. Sometimes the saints had to come home and undress them and get them ready for bed. They were still under the power and couldn't eat for three days. And now these folks will get filled tonight. And 15 minutes after they get filled, they popping gum, saying, where y'all going tonight? I ain't talking to you, I'm talking to her. It ain't your business. Honey, didn't you just get filled precisely? You don't like it? I'm afraid something is wrong. How can you get so much Holy Ghost and come up 15 minutes later acting like you had never even heard whether that be a Holy Ghost? You see, we've got to get feel in depth. There's one baptism, but there are many read feelings. The early church in the fourth chapter of Acts, they got together and just left Pentecost and said, why do the heathens rage? 
and why do the people imagine a vain thing lord behold the enemy's threatenings and grant us boldness to preach your word by stretching forth your hands to heal working signs and wonders and let miracles be wrought in the name of your holy child jesus and the bible said while they spake the holy ghost fell and they were filled again they had already been filled but they were filled again not wrong in being filled again you've come to azusa to be filled again it don't mean i haven't been filled but i just want to refill it fill me in depth give me boldness i want to be so filled till fire go to burning in my prayer life to me the devil told you it's over it's over it's over for you he's knocked you to the canvas the count is eight the count is nine can you get up by the count of ten somebody said no but that's when the bell will ring he'll bring you to your neutral corner You've got your manager and you've got your doctor. The doctor don't train you how to fight, but he patches up your wound. But it's your manager that talks to you. He knows the fight. The Holy Ghost is your manager. He knows how to win this fight. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Some of you tonight is like Joe Lewis. Said Joe, you're losing the fight. If you must win, you got to knock him out. Slew footy Joe Lewis. Said if I gotta knock him out, I got to knock him out. You've been boxing with the devil. God said, knock him out. Let's call it a night. Let's call it a day. Put him to the canvas. Hallelujah. Knock him cold. Knock him out of your spirit. Folks have hollered, 
but not for Jesus. This morning, this high noon service, I want everybody in here, if you got any vocal cords, you don't have to holler pretty. You don't have to, no, just forget it. This ain't no rehearsal. I want you to just, the Bible said make a drum up. I want you to go up and just holler like the ceiling is gonna come. Like you're gonna take the ceiling off. I'm gonna count one, two, three, and I'm gonna say Shabbat. And when I say Shabbat, you say, well, what's to all that hollering? That's what Joshua and them did. And you know what? The walls fell and they took the city. There's a wall around the city. There's a wall around this city. And the devil think he's got everything under control. And the devil's got the keys to the city. But I'm here to tell you, thank God the people of God we've marched around the walls. Some of you have been marching around them for four years. Some of you have been marching around your situation for 12 years. But I came to tell you, it's coming down. It's coming down. Are you ready? And I want you to holler like you ain't got a bit of sense. Huh? And I'm going to tell you something. While you're doing that, some of you don't get it. Something's gonna break. Something's gonna happen. You waiting for me to touch it, but God's gonna beat, God's gonna beat you to it. When you begin to, when you get through hollering, some of you is gonna be gone. The burden's gonna be lifted. When I count one, two, three, Shabbat, because he said it's not gonna be prolonged. It's not gonna be prolonged anymore. I said this is the last chapter. And it's been a thick book in your life. But this is the last chapter, the last episode. And many of you are going to break away, break a loose. You're going to break through, you're going to break out. You're going to break over this thing. Are you ready? One, two, three, Shabbat. Your knocks may become boost. That 
your stumbling blocks may become stepping stones. That what has been hindrance may be success. That everything you need will be at your fingertip. That if it's not in your church, that it'll be at your fingertip. That you can be your maximum. I speak the increase. I speak larger quarters. Prepare for more room. Get more chairs. Get more seats. Start looking for larger quarters. This is your time. This is your day. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. And walk in the realm of miracles. Let's praise him everybody. Let's praise him. Let's praise him. God I receive. God I receive. God I receive. God I receive. Woo! God I receive. God I receive. God I receive. Hallelujah. 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 Grasso means to throw one another, to press the hole down with the hand. And this is why the devil is working to try to get a hold on you, to pin you down, to make you cry uncle, to make you give. But these are the days we've got to know the strategy. I found out if you can stay on your feet, if you have to lean up against the wall to keep from falling, if you have to lean up against every promise that God has given you to keep from falling. Because you know, even the society we live in, once you fall, they're gonna put their foot on you. But if you can stay on your feet, you may reel, you may rock, but stay on your feet, man. Don't let it get you down. I don't care what it is. Don't let it carry you under. It's the will, it's the purpose of the enemy to you under but tell him devil I refuse to go under I refuse to go under you wrestle not against flesh and blood but number two principalities principalities are master spirits great prince of darkness evil beings of high rank and dominion you know I often tell people this you remember when the disciples was trying to cast the devil out of that little boy all 12 of them. Can you imagine? Just picture 12 preachers. Come on out of him, you devil. Don't you come back and do The bar was getting worse. So you know what happened? The man looked and saw Jesus coming and he didn't want to make them 12 preachers feel bad. Thank you. He left. Thank you. He does look some better. Thank you so much. Come on, son. And while he was yet coming to Jesus, the devil threw that boy down and began to tear him. You can always tell when deliverance is near because the devil try to make the situation look more worse. Hallelujah. Devil threw him down and began to tear him. You know why the devil threw him down? Because the devil knew that was his last throw. Look at the one next to you and tell him, neighbor, I know the devil's been fighting you situation but today is his last throw in this episode Now understand me, this is what we don't realize, people don't realize, that different, right now after Jesus cast the devil out, the disciples didn't say nothing around there, they waited till the meeting was over. And they said, listen God, Jesus we haven't been so embarrassed in all of our lives. We didn't call you, you called us. And you told us you'd make them become fishers of men, and all 12 of us couldn't do a thing with that demon in that boy. Why couldn't we cast the devil out of him? No, Jesus said this kind. We've come to the this kind. This kind. Go without only. Now the very fact he 
he said this kind he distinguished that demon from the other giving us to know that there are demons of higher ranks that demons that stronger than others because Jesus just whooped every one of them but that demons that, and we need to know this in warfare because there's some demons you can say little share and the demon will run only to bring back his big brother did I hear some loosen around here see you got some demons that's hairy chest flea bitten bumpy back demons that's been around for a long time and they don't just go when you say shoo 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 this kind goeth out only but by fasting and praying and we've entered into war well there's a scripture that tells us no man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man there's some things the devil have taken from you. There are some things. I know that every family that's represented here is not intact. I know there's some of you that need to go back to your family if it's any way possible and to be the father to your children like you're supposed to be. Your children need you. But somehow, some way, you just got in a world and when you knew anything everything was out of control some of you have lost good jobs and good money because of habits the devil capsized you with but we're going to stage a drug burst and we're going to the devil's warehouse there's some things in his warehouse that he stole from us and we're going to get it back. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. And you know, usually when they give a when they give a raid, they go into that place, that warehouse, or to that building. You know, like you see over the news, they see transistor radios, PA systems, computers, televisions that have been stolen from boxcars on the railroad, that have been stolen from homes, and nobody knew where they were. But when they give that invasion and when they give that raid, you hear him say, hey, that's my television. That's my transistor radio. That's my computer. I have my name on the back of it. There's some things the enemy have taken because he comes to kill, he comes to steal, and he comes to destroy. But today is reconciliation and reconciliation ties in with restoration. And restoration means to restore, give back to you. God comes to give it back. The devil has tried to trap you because the reason why he wants to kill you, death trap, not domesticate you. He's trying to kill you because, number one, he can't get you to do what he wants you to do. Sometime when the devil can't get you to do what he wants. Sometime when Satan can't control you. When he know he can't get you to go back into the things that God have brought you from. When he know he can't get you to backslide. When he know he can't get you to sell out. When he know he cannot get you to compromise. Then he feels this way. If I can't have you, nobody else will have you. But God told me to tell you that he broke the snare of the father. 
and the snare is broken and as I conclude on tonight there are many of you that's listening to me you've been wondering why things have been gone the way they've gone I know this is jubilee year past the internet and I know this is 98 and I know that the number 8 is the number of beginning but Elder Hinton I have gone through the torches of the dam I have gone through flood and I've gone through flame and why in the world if this is jubilee year why am I going through what I'm going through I just came to tell you that God has plans for your life and the devil don't like it he's trying to snare you but I came to tell you the snare is broken he's tried to cage you in it hurts when you hear folks getting saved and look like your folks are not getting saved when you hear children getting saved and look like your children are not getting saved the devil began to talk to you but God told me to tell you the snare is broken and you're going to get your make your getaway you're getting out of that state thou shall be far from oppression the enemy that have oppressed you today he won't press you no more God brought you out on the wheel of time for such a time as this there are many people that's born in this time but you were born for this time that's all together different some people are born in this time but you were born for this time you were born for such a time as this God brought you out on the wheel of time so you could be here for the millennium so you could be here to usher in the year 2000 he brought you here so you could be here to usher in the new revival and the surge of the spirit God is going to move he's getting ready to close the show he's not going to rapture a hanky panky church he's not going to rapture a brill queen church a little devil do you he's not going to rapture a mickey mouse church but he's going to rapture church anointed appointed full of power full of spirit full of dynamite the gifts in operation the power of god sweeping the holy ghost having preeminence yes 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 this is the day that the lord has made and god told me to tell you that many of you you're going to walk into perfect health as your days so shall your strength you're going to start getting healthy as the day go by are you hearing me you seem to think the only way to get healed is for someone to knock you down the only way to get healed is for someone to grease you and knock you down that's one way but God says if you hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God you're going to be blessed in the field blessed when you go out blessed when you come in blessed be the fruit of your body I made you the head not the tail you're going to lend and not borrow I make you above and not beneath you're not going to be a tail dragon but a head leading can you say glory can you say glory but uh, 1999 nine, nine. this is the year of birth nine months 99 this is the year of birth the state of emergency of bringing forth a new beginning to come into an existence this is the year of manifestation are you listening what you're waiting for God to do in the millennium he want to do it now for these years out are you listening to me 
want you to be prepared. I want you to be prepared. This is the year of delivery. This is the time. This is the time of delivery. Hallelujah. This is the time to see the travail of your soul. To see what you're pregnated about. It's time for it to come forth this year. Huh? You see, any birth after nine months is overdue. Any birth before nine months is premature. Am I right? Hallelujah. Now, a woman can't conceive taking birth control pills. Naturally so. I'm bringing out a spiritual point. Don't get nervous. <laughs> See, people telling that Lord, have your way, Lord, in my life. Jesus, I want you to use me right now. Thank you, Jesus. And you're taking spiritual birth control pills. You can't conceive the word. The seed of the word. You can't, you, you can't get pregnant in your spirit. Because you're taking the thing that's preventing pregnancy. Are you listening to me? But it's time to become pregnant. Are you listening? Hallelujah. David said my soul waited only upon him. For my expectation. Look at the one next to you and tell him I'm expecting. My expectation is from him. Then a woman cannot give birth. If every time she turn around, she's aborting it. Hmm? She cannot give birth if every time you turn around, she's aborting it. Here God had pregnated your spirit with something. And here you figure, no, honey. So and so, she was doing that. They, they, honey, they persecuted her. She almost starved to death. No, me, a missionary? No, honey. Mm -mm, but this is what God wants you to be. God wants you to be an evangelist. No, uh -uh, the way they did my father, they killed him. They killed him. I don't want to. I don't want to get in my father's way. son. I want you to step in my shoes. I don't want your shoes. I've seen how them folks did you, Daddy, and I don't want your shoes. And here, this is what God is calling you to do. You know what you're doing? You're aborting the ministry that He wants to pregnant you in. Do you follow me? Do you get the spiritual significance of what I'm saying? Anytime you don't yield and fighting God, God said, Paul, is hard to kick against the preach. Amen. And anytime God is leading you and dealing with you in another way and you don't want to accept it and you're quenching it and you're fighting it, you're aborting yeah. the thing that God wants to pregnate you with.